Welcome to another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun and Mr. Excel Bill Jellum be along just a moment from MrExcel.com. Hey, Mark sent this question in. He said, hey, I have some data and I did a data dump in Excel, but when it was dumped into Excel, the word wrap in the original data set got separated into two cells. So apple pie was supposed to be just for record A and 1. Down here we have fried fish fillet. So we want to go from this data set to this data set. Now I don't have a quick, easy, elegant solution for this. It's going to have a bunch of steps, but there'll be some cool tricks uh, as we go along. Let's go over here. I want to head and put some field names at the top because we're eventually going to have a data set where we need to extract uh, some records. I added an extra column because words together we need to, for example, here have apple pie. Down here we need fried fish fillet. And then we need another column for the records we want to keep and eventually extract. First things though, let's highlight this first column and I'm going to hold control and then click and drag and get this column here too because we need to fill in those blanks. Blanks are not going to help us in this data set. To go to blanks quickly, I'm going to hit F5 and then go to special blanks and then click OK. Ah, what does it do? It highlights all the blanks and there's the active cell. So I'll build my formula which is equals up arrow. That is a relative cell reference which says always look one cell above. Control enter to populate all of those formulas into all those highlighted cells. Now I'm going to add some color. When I'm dealing with uh, text and formulas like this, I at least till I get to the end, I like to have some color there to tell me, hey, that's a formula. Now words together, I'm going to highlight this whole range here. and I'm actually going to hit um, uh, Enter, move the active cell because really, what do I want? When I get to this record right here, I need apple and pie. Well, the formula I'm going to build, we're going to do an if, and we'll say if this cell is equal to that cell, that'll trigger uh, the part of the formula that joins apple and pie. But up here, really all we want is the apple. So watch this. We're going to say equals if this cell right here is equal to this cell, then what do I want? By the way, the reason why I'm building my formula from this active cell is because I went to the position where I need to do the hard part. And that obviously showed me what the logic is for the test. Those two have to be equal. All right, so comma, that's the logical test. If the value, if that comes out true, what do we want? We want to say one cell above, because remember the formula in just a moment, when there's when these two are not equal, it'll just slap that uh, value there. That ampersand, that's the join symbol, shift, shift 7, double quote space, double quote, and then another ampersand. What do we want? This right here. Now why do we do it that way? Why didn't we do apple pie? Because we always need to look above when we're concatenating, because when you're down here and we have three, filet right here, Oh no, I'm sorry, fried is going to have just fried, but when we get down here, the formula will say take fried and get fish, but when we get down here, it'll say take that one which already has fried fish and join it with that one. So that's why we construct it um, looking one cell above. Otherwise, if the value is false, we're just going to take one cell to my left. And by the way, that'll work perfectly because when we don't need to concatenate, cookies will get put there, dumplings will be put there, etc. Close parentheses, and I'm going to populate all of these cells just like we did over here. Control and Enter. Just like that, you can see we get our uh, formula there, and it got fried fish fillet. And sure enough, the bananas, cookies, dumplings work too. I'm actually going to add some green right there. I'm going to control asterisk and highlight the whole thing and add some uh, borders. Now let's highlight this whole range here, and I'm going to do that same trick. I'm going to go down to say right here because I need to figure out this is the record I want. I don't need fried f uh, fish and I definitely don't need fried. Well, what is the pattern we can recognize? Ah, this is not equal to that. That'll work up here too because when we have single values, that's not equal to that, that's not equal to that. When it gets down to this one, that one when we say, is that not equal to that? False. And so that'll get a false there, and, and it, we won't extract that, extract that record there. Nor this one, nor this one, but this one we will. Equals, no if, just a true false formula. Is that one, relative cell reference, not is less than, greater than, not equal to that many relative cells over and one down. Control enter to populate all the cells. I'm going to add some green. Sure enough, true for the apple pie, true, true for all the single ones, 
false for egg, we got the uh, egg sandwich. So we got all our trues and falses. Where there's trues, we extract the record. Now watch this. You might say, oh, I'll just right click sort or use your sort button on the uh, toolbar in earlier versions, but watch what happens. It's terrible. You never want to sort when you have relative cell reference. Totally, that formula obeyed us. It has relative cell references and sorting um, does not work. So I'm going to control Z, but filter will filter. Uh, you can go up to data, uh, filter. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, control shift L. Now I can simply come up here, say, give me everything, I'm um, just true. Click OK. There it works. Notice the blue means were filtered. Sorting moved everything. This one just hit them. So all those uh, formulas underneath, uh, we don't see them, but they're still there in perfect order. I'm going to highlight all these. Control C, notice the uh, dance and answer marching around just the visible cells. Watch this. If I click right here and click Control V, why didn't it work? Because some of the rows are hidden. So Control Z, highlight and copy. You always want to, when you're pasting, come down here and then uh, paste it down here. Now let's go look at this. We're missing, uh, I mean, it's worked fine. We don't need this column, so I'm going to click there and then I'm going to hold Control, click there right click delete and just like that we have our data set now now that all of the records are here I don't need uh, actually uh, this if we want it perfect needs to be in the middle here's a cool trick you can hold shift and hold to the um, point on the edge and click and drag and just like in pivot tables in earlier versions that gray bar means we're moving it and then you let go of it whoops uh, so it's not gonna let me do that until I unfilter this control shift L and then I could try that trick there. Hold shift, point to the edge, click, and when I see that gray bar, I can drop it. And then there we have it. Maybe I even want to get rid of that uh, fill. All right, I'm going to throw it over to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, yeah, that was cool. Okay, now when I saw this, the first thing I thought of is macro. So I just knocked out a quick little macro. The macro is going to work uh, by we select everything in column A, that way if it's uh, more data. And I needed to assign that to a shortcut key, so I click on macros. I call my macro, fix them, and options, control A. Let's use that. And let's just see how it works. So I have the data selected there, control A, bam, it's done. Let's take a look at the macro. We'll click on fix them and edit. All right, so here's what I said. Uh, first of all, next row, that's where I'm going to start to write the output section to. So I start that out to be two and say for each cell in selection, so we have selected these cells here. Uh, and the first thing I check to do to see is if the cell is greater than nothing. If it is, then I need to capture this value uh, here from column A. Also, column B is equal to offset 0, 1. That zero is down one column over and then column C. So I grab those three values. That's what happens if there's something in A. If there's nothing in A, well, then what do I do? I say, hey, well, B is equal to the old B, the B from the last row and a space and the value from this row's column B. All right, so uh, that's my collection process. Now, the other thing I have to do is when I'm on a given row, like row three, I need to look and see if the next column A is filled in. If it is filled in, then I want to write out to the next row. So remember, that starts out to be two. Uh, I'm going to resize it to be one row, three columns, write out the values for A, B, and C, and then increment at one, two, next row. Now, at the very end down here for Indian Almond, uh, there's nothing in cell 18, so I have to be careful outside of the loop at the end. Uh, I copied these two lines of code and said we're going to write it out there. Now, I don't need to increment next row anymore. Um, and you see that little bit of macro code there. Uh, works very, very, very quickly, and uh, just use the, uh, the simple select how wide it needs to be, hit Control A, and you're done. So uh, lots of cool techniques that Mike used there, but sometimes a little bit of VBA code uh, makes it very easy. If this is a process you're doing several times a day or even every day, uh, great to have that macro up in your personal macro workbook, and uh, good to go. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Excel is Fun and Mr. Excel.